To install the console, use the mounting ring with the largest rubber shim. In case of oversized handlebars, use the smaller shims. Assemble the ring and bracket and place the washer under the head of the screw. It is best to complete this assembly over a bench. Generally, the console is installed on the left-hand side of the handlebar as it is accompanied with a throttle module with assistance toggle on the right, or to encourage a user to always have a hand close to the rear brake. Use a Phillips screwdriver to tighten the screw until the bracket is snug. Take care to not over-tighten the bracket. If this screw is too tight, the console may release abruptly or cause an intermittent connection. Slide the console into place. There should be an audible click to ensure the console has been mounted securely. Make sure the console does not slide off without pushing the release. Install the console dock on the center mount console bracket with the screw and washer provided and a Phillips screwdriver. For the center mount console bracket, align it with the center of the stem and use the appropriate rubber shims for the handlebar type. For oversized handlebars, no shims are required. The angle of the console and console dock can be changed by loosening the longer center mount bracket assembly screw. Insert the screws on the bracket supports and tighten with the Phillips screwdriver until snug. The rubber screw covers included in shipping can be cut and reused to cover any exposed length of screw. Slide the console upwards until a click is heard. Never plug or unplug any part of the system with the system turned on, including the console. Notice that the communication cable has an arrow on the female side and a small white triangle on the male side of the connector. These must be aligned before attempting to close the connection. It is a good idea to run the console cables behind the brake and gear cables, as they are less likely to be pulled. Make sure to visually inspect that the six pins are straight and intact. A communication connection closes with an audible click. Depending on local legislation, Bionic Systems may include a throttle module which runs in series between the console and brake switch assembly. The throttle mode runs independently to the Bionic's proportional assist. It is not necessary or advisable to use the throttle at all times. Remember the throttle uses the most energy at any given time. Having the console mounted on the center or left hand side, the throttle is installed on the right hand side of the handlebars. Remove the right handlebar grip and move any applicable brake or gear shift levers as necessary to accommodate the throttle width. Loosen the throttle screw, slide into place and tighten with a Phillips screwdriver. Do not over tighten the throttle screw, tighten until the module is snug on the handlebar. Plug the reed switch into the female throttle connector, tidy the longer throttle wire and plug the male throttle connector into the console dock. It is a good idea to run the throttle cables along or behind the brake and gear cables as they are less likely to be pulled. Make sure you don't accidentally plug the throttle into itself. The brake switch assembly includes a magnet, a reed switch cable, and a foam support. These parts will activate the regenerative braking feature. The brake switch should always be installed on the rear brake lever body with a magnet on the lever arm. Start by dry fitting these parts to test function before installing. Brake levers complete with integrated reed switches are available for a clean install. They are available in cable and hydraulic and will be included with most complete bicycles powered by Bionics. Make sure all system connections are complete and plug the reed switch into the console dock or the short throttle cable. Press either top button on the console to turn the system on. Look at the console screen. Notice the G appear beside the battery state of charge indicator, indicating generate mode when the magnet is moved away from the reed switch cable. Typically the magnet will be installed on the thickest part of the underside of the lever arm, close to the lever body. Adjust the position of the reed switch and the foam support until the system alternates smoothly between bike and generate mode when pulling the brake lever. A brake switch can also be mounted on the front edge of a hydraulic brake lever that doesn't have much throw. Clean both the lever arm and the lever body with isopropyl alcohol to ensure the parts will adhere securely. Install the magnet first by pressing it firmly into place. Next install the foam support with the opening in line with the magnet. The foam support can be trimmed as necessary. Make sure to press firmly to ensure proper adhesion. 
Insert the reed switch in the foam support and slide it close to the magnet. Look at the console while pulling the rear brake lever and adjust the reed switch in the foam support again until the system alternates smoothly between bike and generate mode. As a general rule, it is best to adjust the reed switch so the system goes into generate mode first when the lever is pulled. Then as the lever is pulled farther, the brake pads engage. This will allow the maximum regenerative braking possible and allow longer brake pad life. The last step is to glue the reed switch cable in place with cyanoacrylate glue to ensure that it never moves in the foam support. A misaligned switch and magnet can cause a system to stay in generate mode indefinitely. This can be corrected in the field by unplugging the brake switch, at which point a user should return to their authorized bionics dealer to have this repaired as soon as possible. Thank you.